Usually when you think of NASA, you think of engineering students or chemistry students. It felt like kind of a shot in the dark, especially because, you know, I'm a plant biologist. My name is Greta Savitsky. I am a third year PhD student here at UVM, uh, and I work in the plant biology department in Brian Beckage's lab. So just last Friday, I got the good news that I received the EPSCoR NASA graduate uh, research fellowship, which will fund an entire year of stipend and tuition for me, which means that I get to devote all of my time and energy to my research, which is very exciting. I'm really interested in how climate change is affecting the boreal regions, so northern Canada, Alaska, Scandinavia, Russia. I am using a, a system dynamics modeling approach, uh, which uses software to simulate some differential equations, mapping the movement of carbon through the boreal ecosystem and into the atmosphere and back. Cyclical motion of carbon between Earth and Earth's atmosphere. Part of the application was to talk about the NASA relevance of my project, and it turns out that NASA actually has an active project called ABOVE, um, which stands for Arctic and Boreal vulnerability experiment. And so NASA is actually very interested in how changing levels of atmospheric carbon is impacting the ecology in this region, especially because it's warming faster than any other place on Earth, and also because there is so much carbon sequestered in forests, in soil, in peatlands, and in permafrost uh, that has the potential to be expelled back into the atmosphere. We are already seeing uh, the impact of changing temperatures on boreal ecology. You know, when we saw these huge wildfires in Canada, that was boreal forest that was burning and sending smoke all the way down to Vermont, all the way down to New York City, you know, all the way down the eastern coast. And so we're going to be seeing more of these extreme events, especially wildfires in the area. So if these trends continue, the boreal region has the capacity to emit a lot of carbon, thereby increasing global warming even more in the future. So I did my undergraduate at Middlebury, just a little bit south of here, and I majored in conservation biology, which was kind of half hard biological sciences, so really learning the, the background from uh, cell biology all the way up to ecosystem ecology. And then I also, uh, as part of that program, was exposed to uh, things like environmental policy, environmental justice, uh, environmental history. And so I kind of, I got to bring together the hard science and the humanities aspects of environmental studies, which I think really laid a nice groundwork for me. I came into this graduate program as a Quest Fellow. Quest stands for Quantitative Ecological and Evolutionary STEM Training. Kind of immediately, I was thrown into these high-level computational classes, and I had had absolutely no background in computer science or anything computational. And I am so, so grateful for being kind of thrown into the deep end like that. Um, I took a class called Modeling Complex Systems, which really launched me into a whole data science and machine learning trajectory. I've really found a lot of joy in that, which is something that I never anticipated finding joy in. I always kind of considered myself a plant biologist insofar as I love plants and I love to be out in nature and I love to interact with plants. But I never considered that I could interact with ecology through computer science but that's really the way that the field is going. And so I'm really grateful that uh, I have had this exposure to, to computer science. I think that NASA is doing some really important work at the interface between ecology and climate change. And that is exactly where I want to be uh, once I graduate with my PhD. You know, I, I really want to, to be a scientist that also cares about people. Um, so I can be a plant biologist that also cares about the impact on humans. And I really like that way of thinking. You know, I don't think that we can see our biological systems as separate from ourselves. I'm about to take my comprehensive exam in early April and I'm really excited to share my research with my committee and I'm really excited to see this research project through to the end and see 
what happens with my models. And I'm just so, so grateful for this opportunity.